Stop waiting for apologies. It's lame, it's whack, it's ridiculous, it's dumb, it's insane. It's all of that. It does not empower you at all. You can have a fake apology right now because I know I'm not really sorry right now. Or you can wait a few days till it's cooled down and I'll apologize for my half. And then you go to apologize and they're talking about some, that apology wasn't good enough or it wasn't soon enough. It's like, yo, it's not empowering to wait for apologies. Just stop it. Apologies are way more for the person giving it than for the person receiving it. The same goes for thank yous. If you do something loving for your partner or for a friend of yours and you find yourself waiting for that thank you and that's partly the reason you did it, maybe it's not in your head but subconsciously it is and you can tell by the way that you're waiting for the thank you. That's not love. That's actually codependence, that's uh, that's weakness. You're not, you're not empowered in that situation. Give and forget that you gave. Yeah, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. When you're waiting for that thank you, that thank you will never be enough compared to what you really want. And same with that apology. If you're waiting for an apology, it's never gonna be the apology that you wish you had had. It's just not coming. It's narcissistic, it's wrong, just, just stop it. It's bad behavior. Apologies and thank yous are for the ones giving them. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And here's the thing about the apology. You don't get nothing with it. You don't get no money, you don't get any glory in heaven, you don't get no treasure, you don't get anything, you don't get any new friends, you don't get any girls, you don't get no whatever. You get nothing. Never, ever, 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 ever expect an apology. When you don't expect an apology, it takes the power out of everybody else's hands, the power of your own feelings, the power of the mood that you have, the power of the peace that you have. When you expect an apology and you wait for an apology or you wait for a thank you, you're basically saying, I don't want peace, I want the thank you or I want the apology. That's what I want. You're taking what should be centered in the mind and in the soul, just throwing it out into the atmosphere and what other people are doing and how they're reacting to your life and to your actions and putting it where God should be. Yeah, that's never gonna result in peace or joy. You're gonna be bummed out all the time. Be wronged and just keep walking. Don't expect an apology. And that goes as well for your relationships. Imagine this, you're a girl, say you're a stay-at-home wife and your husband comes home from work and you make dinner for him every night. But you decide, if he doesn't say thank you one night, I'm just gonna stop. Now the man, you have a stay-at-home wife, and every time you come home, she cooks for you and you say thank you. But you decide if she ever doesn't cook, I'm not gonna appreciate her, I'm gonna stop loving her. You see what kind of conditional paradigm this creates when we only do things for thank yous or for, or for service or whatever it is? How much better is this scenario? The wife says, I'm a cook for this man, and if he doesn't say thank you, I'm a cook for him tomorrow and I'm gonna just keep doing it. Same with the man. I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna pay for this mortgage for this woman, I'm gonna provide for this woman, she's my wife. And if she doesn't cook in the evening, that's cool, I'll cook and I'll clean up afterwards because she's obviously going through something. You see how when you both pour love, when you both pour instead of pull, love is a pouring thing. If you both pour on each other, then if one of you can't pour for a second, then it's okay because the love's still pouring. But if you start pulling from each other, it's much less loving. If you start pulling thank yous, you start pulling apologies versus just constantly pouring out thank yous and pouring out repentance or pouring out change instead of expecting it from them. If you're both pouring, that feels a lot better. Imagine both giving each other a massage versus both grabbing each other's hands and making each other give you a massage. That sucks, that's not love, that's not fun. It's just way better if you both pour. And that same principle is true for the apologies and the thank yous. Do right by people and then they react how they react and you just keep rolling because you're doing everything unto the Lord anyway. It's much better when you move that way. That's what unconditional love is and that's how relationships work because there will be a time where you need a break and if your spouse is still pouring, you'll make it. There'll be times where your spouse needs a break and if you keep pouring the love, you'll make it. And it all starts with simple things like not waiting for thank yous, not waiting for apologies, just keep moving. God sees all of this so he weighs on people's hearts. Also, apologies are overrated. I'm not gonna lie, me and my best friends, we don't really apologize or say thank you. We just kind of, if I messed up, maybe I'll say my bad bro, like if I, if I really mess up, but, but you know by my actions, I'm a change and I'm a move right. Same with if you pay for something for me, I'm gonna say thank you, but you're not expecting some kind of parade and I don't expect some, some type of parade from you when I do something for you, but you just show me because we, we reciprocate. We keep pouring, even though it's not a romantic love, it's a, it's a reciprocated relationship where thank yous and apologies are low-key overrated.